us now talk about what the sternocleidomastoid actually does. This is where it gets completely logical. You would have panicked if I said illogical, right? No, it gets very logical. And trust me, not all muscles can be explained logically, the, their actions rather. I have tried very much to, you know, logically correlate uh, actions with muscles and their origin insertion. But in many cases, I have seen that they do not work out that well. Because our anatomical knowledge is not that detailed to know about it. But thankfully, sternocleidomastoid is one such muscle where it's very obvious what it will do and how it does so. So bear with me when I talk about the actions of sternocleidomastoid. See, um, let me remove the platysma. Rather, okay, so this is the platysma muscle, by the way. And I had removed the platysma muscle from here, from this side. So sternocleidomastoid is originally covered by the platysma muscle. And obviously by the skin and other subcutaneous tissue as well. So uh, let's hide that. Now we have a clear vision of both the sternocleidomastoids. Now, let's quickly look at what it does. See, very, very simple. Sternocleidomastoid, as I have said, has two heads. The sternal head and the clavicular head. Why I bring this up is because of the fact that these two heads, when act, they produce different actions. What do I mean by that? See, the sternal head, I said that it was lateral, a little oblique, and the clavicular head was a little more vertical, straight. How this is clinically, or rather, um, how this correlates with the action of sternocleidomastoid is, that this is the right side sternocleidomastoid, this is the right side sternocleidomastoid, right? So the sternal head of this sternocleidomastoid, if this contracts, if this contracts, what it will do is the head will turn to the other side. The head will turn to the other side. See, it's logical. Try to think of this. Suppose this is a rope, okay? The rope is actually attached to over here. Forget about the clavicular head. Just think that there is a sternal head. Okay. The sternal head is this oblique, oblique, right? So if the sternal head acts, if the sternal head is pulling or rather if it's contracting, right? So this is the origin. Origin remains static. It is the insertion point which, you know, is contracted. That's the definition of origin and insertion, right? So if this is, you know, pulled, if this part is pulled, try and think about this, right? If this part is pulled this way, then the head will, what it will do? It will turn to that side. It will turn to that side. Try, try doing this. If you have a little longer hair, you know, you can, what you can do is you can try pulling the hair, which is, uh, you know, at the extreme lower end or you know dangling from your shoulders try pulling that from you know obliquely and you will see that the head will turn to the other side it will rotate to the other side the head here will move to the other side so this exactly uh, is what i meant when i said about the action of the sternal head so um, this is that's why this it's a pretty good application here 3d application it even shows you the motion for a select few muscles so i'm pretty glad that they had given the sternocleidomastoid action but here there is a problem or anomaly given that um, they are showing that this is the clavicular head which is doing the motion that's actually uh, not correct i actually went on to check the other motions as well and uh, they showed that all of them were highlighted to be the clavicular head, which is not correct. So uh, kindly ignore this yellowing, flashing uh, clavicular head. Ignore that. The real thing is, uh, it's pretty logical. Here, you can see that there is a rotation of the head and neck towards the left side, right? Towards the left side. So it's the right-sided sternocleidomastoid or rather the right-sided sternocleidomastoid sternal head which is pulling. See, it's pulling. It's pretty pretty obvious. It's pulling. That's why it's moving to that side. Right? 
So it is the right-sided sternal head sternocleidomastoid, which is contracting, causing a left-sided rotation of the head. Now, this has a particular anatomical, um, I would say, uh, literature behind it. This kind of a motion is known as a contralateral rotation. Contralateral means that the side of the, 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 the left side or rather the right-sided sternocleidomastoid is producing a motion towards the left side. So one-sided muscle or one-sided thing is causing motion towards the other side. That is known as contralateral. So as if they are contradicting themselves, right? The right side is causing a motion towards the left side. The right sternocleidomastoid causes a motion towards the, or rather rotation towards the left side. So this is known as a contralateral rotation of the head. So this happens when the sternal head of sternocleidomastoid acts independently. Okay. Now, what happens when the clavicular head, which they have highlighted over here, when that acts um, independently, what happens then? See, it's pretty logical. If this clavicular head, which is this vertical uh, band, if this vertical band is to, you know, contract, it's very obvious that the head will not rotate. It will tilt to that side. There will be flexion of neck. So this is known as the yeah, lateral flexion of the neck. So let me show you. Yes, see this. This is the action which is produced by the clavicular head of sternocleidomastoid provided it is working alone. Okay, it's working alone. So this is the Left-sided flexion, left-sided lateral flexion is occurring. This is the left-sided sternocleidomastoid clavicular head working. So the left sternocleidomastoid clavicular head causes the left um, lateral flexion of the neck. So this is not contralateral. This is same-sided. So this is known as ipsilateral. So there is ipsilateral flexion of neck. When, when the clavicular heads of sternocleidomastoid act alone, we have talked only alone as of now. So when sternal head acts alone, there is a contralateral rotation of the head. When um, clavicular head works alone, there is an ipsilateral, same sided, ipsilateral flexion of the neck. Okay, done. Now we will see. What happens when both of them act together? When both of them act together, see, they are anteriorly originating, posteriorly inserting. If there is a pull from both of them, from anterior, the posterior part is being pulled anteriorly. So what will happen? The head will, it will actually, it, it will be kind of a bending of head. Pretty obvious the head will bend. So that's like this over here. So the head will, yeah, see there is a bending of the head when both of them will act together. Okay. So this is also, uh, you know, when both of them are acting together, they're pulling the neck forwards. They're pulling the posterior part forwards, excuse me. And hence, there is a bending of the neck. So as if you, when we are, you know, eating food, we bend our head, uh, head forwards. Or when we get out of a pillow, we bend our head forwards. So um, that's the combined action of both the sternal head and clavicular head. So the sternoclavicular, or uh, sorry, the sternocleidomastoid has two actions, or rather three. And I have already mentioned all those three. Another, um, you may say, accessory function of sternocleidomastoid is that in case of forced inspiration, forced inspiration, it acts as an accessory muscle of respiration. Okay? In case of forced inspiration, 
it will act as the accessory muscle of respiration okay done